Today I am walking you through something alarming yet underreported. Lipsticks contaminated with dangerous levels of lead and what safer choices you can make. We'll balance the science with everyday language so it's both informative and understandable. Imagine applying a beautiful color to your lips every day. Now imagine that little bit of pigment gradually delivering a toxic load of heavy metal to your body over months or years. That's what we'll unpack. Let's begin with the fundamentals. Why would lipstick even contain lead? Lead is not an ingredient per se, but a contaminant. Many cosmetic products use mineral pigments, mica, or metal oxides drawn from geological sources. Those raw mineral sources may already carry trace amounts of heavy metals like lead, cadmium, chromium, or arsenic. During mining, processing, refining, or transport, further contamination can occur. In some rare formulations, lead compounds might be added intentionally, either to strengthen color, improve adhesion, or improve durability. But in most modern, regulated cosmetics, it's regarded as an impurity, not a functional ingredient. Studies in the scientific literature note that lead often turns up in cosmetics as a contaminant, possibly because it was in the same rock from which mineral-based colorants and mica powder were made. Now, how big a problem is this? Decades of testing across different geographies show that many lipsticks do in fact contain lead, in amounts that vary dramatically. In a well-known early study called A Poison Kiss, 33 popular lipsticks were tested. About 61% had measurable lead, in levels from 0.03 to 0.65 parts per million ppm, i.e. micrograms of lead per gram of lipstick. One third of those exceeded 0.1 ppm, which is a standard often used by analogy for lead in candy. That report sparked greater regulatory awareness and consumer concern. Following that, the US FDA carried out analyses. In a 2009 test of 20 shades from 12 brands, they detected lead in all samples, in a range of 0.09 to 3.06 ppm. Later, in a broader survey of 400 lip products, the maximum detected lead level was 7.19 ppm. Thus, lipstick lead levels can in some cases exceed 7 ppm. For context, the FDA now recommends, though it is not a binding regulation, that cosmetic lip products not exceed 10 ppm lead as an impurity. In their view, this level is technically achievable under good manufacturing practices and is unlikely to pose a measurable health risk via incidental ingestion. Indeed, in most FDA surveys, more than 99% of tested lip cosmetics had less than 10 ppm lead. Many regulatory and safety assessments assume that exposure from lipstick would add only a tiny fraction, e.g. 1-2% to to overall blood lead levels in an adult. Still, Tiny fraction doesn't always mean no risk, especially when exposure accumulates and for vulnerable groups, pregnant individuals, infants, children. Lead is a potent neurotoxin with no truly safe threshold, according to many public health experts. Once absorbed, lead accumulates in bones and tissues, crossing the blood-brain barrier, impairing cognitive development and contributing to kidney damage, hypertension and more. Let me paint a more concrete risk picture using modeling studies. Researchers often use exposure models like the US EPA S Adult Lead Model or Integrated Exposure Uptake Biokinetic IUBK models for children to simulate what incremental lead from lipstick might do to blood lead levels. For example, one of those studies assumed consumption of lipstick equivalent lead at various concentrations and looked at the resulting predicted blood lead. They found that for typical adult use, even with lead concentrations as high as 7 ppm, the added blood lead would remain below meaningful thresholds in most cases. But for high users or for children exposed via maternal transfer or incidental ingestion, margins narrow. Another study in Ghana analyzed 12 lipstick samples using X-ray fluorescence. They measured multiple heavy metals, including lead, and then computed health risk assessments. Although non-carcinogenic hazard quotients, a ratio of estimated exposure to safe reference dose, remained below 1 in many cases, implying acceptable risk, their relative intake indices for lead and cadmium in oral exposure scenarios exceeded acceptable daily intake for heavy users. This suggests that, 
under worst-case patterns, the incremental contribution could matter. In yet another comparative study, averages of lead in various lipstick types were reported. Solid lipsticks had mean lead, 2.45 mean bidas kegas, gloss, 1.28, creamy evro 95. One more data point. A study from Turkey measured lead in 34 lip products and found that 41% of the items showed undetectable lead. Among detectable ones, levels ranged up to 0.5237 murant drags, i.e. 0.5237 ppm. Their average lead content across all lip products was about 0.05791 clan murikange, 0.0579 ppm, well below common regulatory thresholds. They performed Monte Carlo simulations, 10,000 iterations, to estimate non-carcinogenic and carcinogenic risk. Even for heavy users, the 95th percentile non-carcinogenic risk was 2 to 2 8 2 sex 10 to 3, far under the threshold of 1, which would signal unacceptable risk. Carcinogenic risk estimates stayed between 10 to 12 and 10 to 8, far below a typical safety threshold of 10 to 6. Such results suggest that, for many users, incremental risk remains low, but the caveat is the model assumptions, lifetime exposures, and synergy with other lead sources. Given this mix of data, it's conceivable that among Housing 6 lipsticks contaminated with dangerous levels of lead, some of those items exceeded 7 ppm, or may have had lead content far higher than average products, perhaps owing to poor oversight, cheap pigment sourcing, or inadequate purification steps. If a lipstick had, say, 15 ppm lead, that would clearly exceed the FDA's recommended safe ceiling and enter more worrisome territory, especially for heavy or chronic users. So how does this translate into real-life risk? Here's how lead exposure from lipstick might happen. 1. You apply lipstick. 2. A small fraction wears off or transfers when eating, licking lips, kissing or touching. 3. That transferred pigment containing trace lead is swallowed or absorbed in the mouth. 4. Some proportion is absorbed into the bloodstream, distributed to tissues, some excreted, some retained and accumulated. 5. Repeated day after day, it contributes to your total lead burden, on top of dietary, environmental, water or occupational sources. Because of that cumulative effect, even a borderline product, one that seems within limits, can tip the balance for susceptible people, particularly if other lead exposures already exist, e.g. in water, dust, paint or soil. The margin for error is narrower when lead exposure is already elevated from other sources. Also, pregnant people or young children face more acute risk. Lead crosses the placenta, affecting fetal brain development. In children under 6, it can reduce IQ, impair attention, hinder growth and cause behavioural issues. These kinds of effects can happen even at very low blood lead levels, so every exposure route deserves scrutiny. Given that, what should consumers use or avoid? How do you minimize risk without abandoning lipstick entirely? First, prefer products from reputable brands with transparent quality control. Brands that test for heavy metals, publish certificates of analysis, or mention low heavy metal impurity in their materials, speak to a higher standard. Check whether the manufacturer explicitly addresses heavy metal testing, purity of pigments or ISO GLP compliance. Second, opt for lip products certified by third parties or that carry independent lab testing results. Occasionally, consumer advocacy groups test lipsticks and publish lead content data. Be cautious of high pigmentation products, dark reds or browns. They sometimes use richer, more complex mineral pigments, which could carry heavier impurity loads. Third, go for creamier formulas or balms when possible, rather than extremely matte, powdery, or long-wearing formulas. Highly pigmented, long-wear lipsticks are more likely to use stronger colorants and binding additives, which sometimes correlate with higher impurity risk. Fourth, rotate your lip colors instead of sticking to one formula all the time, to reduce cumulative exposure from a single source. Clean your lips regularly. Avoid licking or eating off large swaths of color and avoid ingesting excess product. Fifth, check for lead-free labels or brands specifically marketed as heavy metal tested, safe pigments or mineral cosmetics tested for lead, cadmium.
Some indie or niche clean beauty lines emphasize strict screening. Some also replace heavy metal-bearing pigments with safer organic or synthetic alternatives. Sixth, consider using lip stains or tinted balms that use synthetic colorants rather than heavy mineral pigments. Some of those avoid mineral oxides altogether and rely on organic dyes with lower contamination risk. Seventh, maintain overall low lead exposure in your environment. Clean your home to reduce dust, filter your water if needed. Use clean cookware, monitor lead sources in your area. Lowering background exposure reduces risk from cosmetic roots. Eighth, for pregnant or breastfeeding individuals, consult your physician or a toxicologist before using bold or heavily pigmented lip products frequently. If you want to make your own mini risk calculator, here's a rough sketch. Suppose a lipstick carries 5 ppm lead, i.e. 5 micrograms of lead per gram of lipstick. If you apply 0.05 G per day and 0.5% flakes off and is ingested, that's 0.05 X 0.005 0.0025 G ingested times 5 UG G shot 0.0125 UG of lead ingested per day. Over a year, that's yum 0.4056 UG total. That's small in isolation. But if your water, food, air, dust exposures already deliver tens or hundreds of micrograms of lead, the lipstick increment adds up. If the lipstick instead had 20 ppm, the ingestion jumps to fourfold. That's why high contaminant lipsticks, e.g. those six worst offenders, matter more. If you want a script ending with a call to action, I'd say, encourage viewers to demand transparency, support regulation of cosmetics, heavy metal limits, and favor brands that test rigorously. If you like, I can refine this into a time-coded video script structure, with intros, transitions, voice cues, or produce a shorter version for social media.